you how to use QLab for theatrical productions. So welcome to QLab, which is only available on Mac. Um, but that's fine, because that's what I'm working on. So first off, before I get into QLab, let's leave, let me just talk about where you can get your sound effects. Uh, there's a bunch of great websites uh, where you can get royalty-free music and sound clips and sound effects. So Ben Sound uh, is a really good one that I like here. So you can go ahead and kind of listen to snippets and then download the mp3s that you want to use. There's also soundbible.com um, which is great because you can search for all sorts of different sound effects uh, and you can download them as either a wave or an mp3 and for the purpose of uh, your project I recommend uh, sticking with the mp3 um, and again you can kind of like listen to them and then select on uh, the mp3 that you want to actually download. So those are where you're going to find your sound effects. I suggest kind of putting them all in a folder, maybe on your desktop or someplace where you can uh, stick them all. Sorry, that's not the one that uh, I was talking about. Um, stick them all in a folder where you've got all your MP3s kind of all together. So now let's talk about QLab. So QLab is a playback software. Um, so I, I can create a, a, a Q list that I'm going to then uh, edit and fade in, fade out, uh, change the volume so that we can play back stuff. So you have all these cues up at the top here that you can mess around with. Uh, the ones that you're really going to be using are the group cue, the audio cue, and the fade cue. Uh, those are what we're going to be using for this particular project. In later classes, in second year and third year, we talk about video and text and subtitles and microphones and all that sort of stuff. But since this is first year, we want to keep it simple for you. So what's great about QLab is it is pretty much a drag and drop. So uh, let's say that this is going to be my first track that I want to work with. Uh, I can just drag and drop that in. Now you'll see that it comes in and is called whatever it happens to be, um, whatever the file was called when uh, you brought it in from the internet. But trust me, you want to rename things. So this is going to be my pre-show music. So I'm just going to rename that pre-show music. All right, there we go. Now, if I were to hit the space bar, that'll start playing it. And then you'll probably be panicking going, how do I stop this? How do I stop this? Down here is something that you want to pop up. It's this little list chart thing over here. Uh, in the bottom corner here, that's where you're going to get these kind of master controls of go back, stop, that sort of thing. All right, so that's kind of one of the first things you want to have done is have that pop up so that you can stop the music. But now if this is the actual show, that's not how you want to stop the music. You want to be able to fade out the music whenever you're ready to start the show. So that's where this uh, cue comes into play, which is this fade cue. So you can kind of click on it, click and drag. By the way, if you click several times, you can't just hit the delete button or right click to delete. To delete cues, they kind of make you really want to make sure you want to delete it. <laughs> so it's command uh, delete or edit delete to actually delete a cue. Now what's great about QLab is whenever it doesn't understand what it needs to do, you get this little uh, X that pops up or a question mark that pops up to tell you what's wrong with when you hover over top of it. So by putting in a fade cue, it says, all right, there's no target cue. What do you want it to fade? Well, I have to click and drag my um, target cue, my, in this case, my pre-show music over top of that. Now, it, that X is still there. It says, well, no fade parameters have been enabled. Pick at least one to fade. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, it needs to know, do you want it to fade up, like increase in volume? Do you want it to fade to the left speaker or the right speaker, or do you want it to fade out? So that's where I need to come down here into my kind of tabs, and there's one called audio levels. And here, it's got a box around what it needs information about almost. It's like, okay, I've got to fade it out. Um, so I need to, th these are my, mas my master, and then my, this is my left and my right. So I need to actually just assign that these are going to be fading out. So now you can see that I've got my uh, red X has disappeared. So if I go back here and I hit the go button or the space bar, my music plays. And then I can fade that out. Now by default, the music already fades out um, at a particular uh, speed, all right, particular seconds. 
And I also need to point out something. With this fade cue, notice how the music is still playing in the background. Well, I don't want that to happen. I want it to fade out and stop. So in my audio levels, when I've selected what I want it to fade down to, I'm making a fade all the way out. I have to check this little box saying stop target when done. So that will then, if I stop and I go back to my first one here, it's playing, blah, 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 blah. And now it'll fade down and stop. Perfect, that's what I want. Now it's fading out at three seconds. Let's say I wanted a longer um, fade out time. Well, that's in the curve shape here. This affects how it will fade. I'm gonna keep that the way it is here, but I can change the duration. So I can make this maybe a, a five second fade out. And then that changes it there. I think I can actually double click in the action tab as well and change it to a different time if I wanted to. But in this case, I'm gonna keep that at five seconds. So now I've got a nice five second. So there's my pre-show music. It's playing and whenever I want it to fade, I can have it fade out. I don't have to wait until the end of the song. Now I want to start my play. So, well, we're going to start with scene one. Well, I'm going to create a group because it's going to be a series of groups, a series of cues within this group known as scene one. So that's where this stack, uh, this group cue, um, top left hand corner comes in. And I can name that, so I'm gonna call this scene one. And my particular play is taking place at a beach. So I'm gonna call it scene one, beach. Now I can drag and drop the other uh, cues that I have uh, that are gonna be here. So I'm gonna have some beach waves. I'm gonna have some seagulls. I'm gonna have some kids laughing. Um, what's that saying? Oh, let kids laughing. I got to drop that in there. Uh, and my beach waves, yeah, and seagulls. Now, uh, get rid of that for a sec. You'll see that I've got, oh, I've only got my seagulls in there. I've got to get my beach waves in. So I've got to drag and drop that in. Pay attention with where that blue bar is so you can see where you're dropping things. I want to have that all within this box that I can then kind of minimize and expand. So again, I want to rename these things so I don't have this big long um, file name. So I'm going to call this uh, Beach uh, Waves. And that's going to be kind of my background sound uh, cue, my sound effect, uh, to just kind of set the location. Then I have the seagulls. So uh, and then I've got these kids. Oops, uh, click on that. Kids, there you go. So for my particular scene, I want to start off with these, the sound of the waves fading in, which kind of sets the location of the particular scene. So I want to do is fade in. So again, I've got to drop my fade cue. That X appears saying, well, hey, what do you want me to fade? Well, I want you to fade the beach waves. But now in this case, I want to fade in the sound. So my beach waves has to start off with no sound, okay, when I start the track. And then the fade is going to fade up to a particular volume, all right? And I'll preview this in a sec just so that we can see what that's going to sound like. But now if I were to hit the space bar, which is the go, okay, I can see that that's playing. And then I've got to hit the space bar again for that to fade up. Well, it'd be great if that was a one step thing that I just need to hit the space bar once, the go button once, and both things happen at the same time. Well, that's where over on this side here, I've got these little, um, sorry, I wanna go to beach waves. Uh, I want to put a little auto follow. So if I click here, I can click on auto follow. Now there's two types of uh, auto follows. There's auto continue and auto follow. Well, an auto continue is what I want in this case, because it'll start this cue and continue to do the next one. Whereas an auto follow means that this will wait until that's done and then go on to the next track. So I want to auto continue this one. All right. So now if I hit it both or hit it once, they both go at the same time. Beautiful. 
So again, I can change the fade time. Let's say I want this a nice slow fade in of say seven seconds. Now my track is only 22 seconds long and then it's gonna stop at the end of it. Well, I can make that loop around again and again. So make sure that I've highlighted my beach waves. I can go into time and loops and if I knew that I only wanted it to play for a certain amount of time, uh, I can do that and or I could hit infinite loop. And so it's just going to keep playing until I tell it to fade out. This time in loops is great as well because if I didn't like the entire track, I could trim it to just the portion that I wanted to loop. Um, if it was a song and I wanted just a section of the song, I can trim it to just that section. So it doesn't affect the MP3, but it affects the playback of the MP3. So it's not actually cutting it. It's, um, it, it's just editing it for the purpose of the production. Uh, and so you can go back and readjust it later. So that's where the time and loops is really handy. Um, all right, so now I've got the waves that are gonna fade in, fade out, and then I've got my seagull. So my waves, let's just play that, just make sure I can hear it well. Oh yeah, I've got the long seven second fade. And if I wanted that lower in volume, I would have to make sure that I'm on the track that's playing, which in this case is the fade. And yeah, let's say that that's a good volume there. I'm making it slightly louder just so that you guys can hear it uh, on the, the video recording here. Then we've got our seagulls. Whoa! Those are loud. <laughs> so let's bring down the volume of the seagulls there in my left and right speakers. Maybe I want them more in the left than in the right. Just make it sound like they're coming from one side. Uh, so let's uh, hit the go button on that. Still a little loud. Yeah, maybe that's good. All right, let's just stop that. Let's just hear my kids. Same thing with the kids. I think I'm gonna bring them down. Yeah, those are some kids laughing. All right, so let's see what my sound feels like. Now I could put auto follows on the beach waves, um, or sorry, the seagulls and the kids, but more often than not, you want the sound cues to be called. So maybe you want the, the, the scene to be established. Maybe there's some dialogue or text. And then maybe you hear the seagulls. Uh, and then over top, the kids playing at a separate time. So it, it, it's up to the stage manager to call when those cues would, um, would appear. All right. So the scene starts with a slow fade in. Then maybe once it's established after, you know, whatever the, the scene calls for. I can have the seagulls appear. Then have the kids kind of join in with their laughing. Just gonna bring down the seagulls a bit. There we go, that's a pretty good scene. But now, scene's over, I gotta have it fade out somehow. So, I've gotta jump in another fade down at the bottom here. And I wanna now fade out that um, group. So I can minimize the group. And I can just say, I want you to fade out the group. Not only that though, I wanna make sure that I stop target when done so it fades out and stops it all. Now the X is still there because it wants to know what you want me to fade it to. So in this case, I'm making you fade out. So let's go back and listen to our whole thing. I'm just gonna expand that again. So I've got our fun pre-show music. I could have a group of pre-show music as well that could just auto loop through the various tracks. But in this case, I, all right, there we go. Oh, audience is ready. Fade that out. Okay, we're going into a blackout maybe. Actors are getting in space and onto the stage. Then we fade in our scene with our waves. So that's playing in the background while the scene is taking place. Maybe they say, oh, look at the birds over there. Oh, look, there's birds. Uh-oh, here come the kids. Space bar again, and the kids appear. And then fade and stop absolutely everything. So again, maybe that's a quick, too quick of a fade out, so I can change the time on my fade out, maybe to five seconds, whatever you want it to be. Now the key thing, and this is where you would do it in the level set, 
um, you've created your um, playlist here, but it's not until you're in the theater with the actual speakers that you want to set your levels. But here you're just listening to it on your headphones or your computer speakers. So you want to get a good balanced sound. So if you're still finding that those seagulls are way too loud compared to the beach, you want to bring them down. Maybe the kids need to be a little bit louder. So you want to play around with the audio levels um, on each particular track so that you're not being blasted by one so it sounds nice it sounds real um, personally here with the scene that I've made here the kids sound a little canned but whatever it's it's working for the purpose of this little project so there you go there's how to use QLab in a nutshell ah more importantly though now how do you share it with somebody all right, well, you would think, hey, I'm just going to go to file, save that, and then send that off to somebody, you know, call that beach. That won't work because what happens is that that just sends this list. It doesn't send the actual files. So I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, then fine. I'll just send you the files individually. No, because when that happens and I open it up, I open up the queue list and I get all these X's and it doesn't know where the targets are. So what you need to do is bundle this all together the files and the queue list here so if you go to file bundle workspace that's what you need to do let me show you that again file bundle workspace and then that pops up let me show you that one more time file bundle workspace i hope you get it now so now it's called beach i'm going to hit save uh, it already exists because I already did this before, but there we go. Now what it's doing, it creates an additional pop-up. All right, let's just get out of that and then come back here. And then you can see that it's created a folder. And in that folder is not only my sound cue sheet, um, but it's also a folder with all the audio files. So now when I open this one, it's got everything no red x's it's happy easy to go so it's this folder here that you are going to send or upload for your project okay so you'll probably have to compress it um so that you can actually uh send it up to brightspace or um just so that we can we can get it because uh, there's a limit to how much you can actually upload uh, it needs to be under a gig so you need to make sure that uh, you're using very small um, easy mp3s for the project so there you go i hope this made sense uh, have fun with the project be creative uh, find some good sound effects and uh, away you go all right take care bye